Hey, welcome to September Seniors Living in Paradise. Hey, my man George, he went on vacation. Retired guy, go on vacation. You can imagine that. So he leave me all over here. But you know what? We got one really exciting show for you. And I'm going to start off with something really, really exciting for all of you because every man should know how to cook. I am going to make one kimchi fried rice. We find this in KTH, frozen. Okay? All what you do, you put on your stove there uh, about one tablespoon of oil. Okay? About one tablespoon of oil. Just put them in like this, right? And for frozen, the fried rice, for frozen now, yeah? Yeah, let's look at all that man like. You look inside. You see how that thing looks like, yeah? It's all like nice and kimchi flavor. And you know what? I'm going to cook this for one of my workers because that guy's going to work late tonight and then he told me he's going to make him dinner. Okay? You get the pan hot and then you just so easy this yeah. You kind of like stir them up, okay? Just fry them up like this. From frozen steak, right? One tablespoon oil. You see, I get a big pot because I see it's KTA Dallas today. Okay? Okay, I'm gonna be frying up for about three minutes. You just gonna heat them up like this in a pan. Three minutes, only three minutes, you can get fried rice and fish. That's just the right scoop and all that, right? You know, September is time for your flu shot, and I got Brent over here, and I got Megan, Pharmacy Megan. So, Brent, you know, you, you, you're just a professional when it comes to flu shot. So, you know, I'm gonna take my flu shot. So, let me know what do I have to bring. Just need your insurance card. My insurance card, okay. And? And you just gotta fill out um, a form when you come in. Wow. So, you, I gotta fill up this form here yes. and uh, when I do come in. Yes. Sir. Yeah? Yeah. Do I have to make appointment or anything like that? No. No, you don't no appointment or no anything else, no. right? Okay, so, hey, I wanna ask you a question. How good is our pharmacies in giving <laughs> They're very good. They're very good, yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the flu shot, the, they used to take it with the nose and the arm. It's, tell me about it. Well, the flu shot this year, they're actually not recommending the nasal. Oh, okay. I'm not sure that it was any more effective. So okay. we do offer a quadrivalent flu shot here. So there's two different kinds. There's a trivalent, which has three different strains. Okay. And the quadrivalent, which has four. So you're getting an extra strain of protection when you come here, because we do offer the quadrivalent. So two okay. strains of influenza A and okay. two strains of influenza B. Okay. Um, it is one of one of the strains is different from last year, so okay. it's important to get this year's flu shots. Okay. So, um, so pharmacy Megan, uh, maybe you can tell me how important it is to get a flu shot. Very important. Um, the flu is um, can be actually very fatal. Okay. Um, for both adults and children, so it's okay. very important. It's something simple that you can do to protect yourselves and protect your loves, loved ones. Um, it takes just a few minutes to come down here, fill out the form. We can give you the shot right here um, in the, at the pharmacy. It's very quick and easy. Pharmacy Megan, how are you going to be to get a flu shot? So you, we can actually administer to 11 and older. If you're 11 to 17, you do need okay, a prescription okay. from your primary care doctor okay. um, sent here, but we can administer all the way down to age 11. Um, okay. Anyone 18 and older, you can just walk on in. No okay. prescription needed. Okay, fantastic. So, um, friend, yeah. right, you need appointment? No, no appointment. Okay, no appointment needed. And tell them yes. what you got to bring your again. Insurance card. Insurance card, yeah. and you got to fill out the form. Yeah. You know what? I filled out this form already. It was so simple that even I could fill it out and answer the <laughs> questions. And now I'm going to take my flu shot. I'm going to show you how easy it is. Okay, Pharmacy Megan, so I'm taking my flu shot. And uh, man, you know, I'm kind of like um, a little nervous here, you know, but uh, I shouldn't be. No, you shouldn't right? be. So can I have it on my, um, on my right arm? Sure. Okay, do okay. you have any questions? Uh, how big is my guns? Oh. They're, they're big, but it's okay. The needle is still working. Okay. okay, I hope so, man. I hope the needle can handle these guns. <laughs> yeah, you can. It'll be good. Okay, it will be good. Okay. Okay, now this is a live thing. And the good thing about it is that, you know, after this, I feel relieved that, you know, I'm, I'm going to be okay this year. Okay? Okay. Okay, pharmacy. Okay. Megan. Okay. Man, you know what? 
Did you put it in already? I did. Man, whoa, I didn't feel anything. You mean it's done? Yes. Whoa. Wow, I didn't feel anything. I was ready for the, the big injection. And look at the band-aid. Cute oh. like band-aid. Cute, yeah? Okay, <laughs> promise to make it any less words. Come down to KTA and get your flu shot. You come on down today. They do a really good job. You don't feel anything. <laughs> and they give you a nice band-aid. Come on down to KTA and get your flu shot. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, I got the man here. You know, I cooked the uh, kimchi fried rice. And he's making um, shot ribs, right? Yeah. Uh, Korean style. So Korean how you style. made this? How you made the sauce? Um, get shoyu, sugar, water, oyster sauce, ketchup, green onions, sesame oil, sesame seeds. And it goes like a little bit spicy. They can put some chili pepper yeah. inside. And what I did was I cut the shot ribs. So that I, I kind of like cut them around the ribs so that I think I'm soft. So, you know, I kind of marinate and squirt all the meat like that to make them soft because, you know, when you come my age, you know, like gamma, right? Yeah. yeah. So I made my soft, I guess, cut them like that, okay? Okay, speed. See that all this smoke and everything else? The thing is ready. I'm gonna try to taste some and see if it's good. Uh -huh. Peace. Like one piece. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a boy he takes a big piece. Look at that. Yeah. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. it's not an oil. It's off now. Yeah. Yeah, how I make them? <laughs> Go on, man. Yeah. Mmm. There you go, Korean shot beef made by speed. I go back in the kitchen and we'll cook some more stuff. Oh yeah? Okay. Give me that cup. Yeah. Aloha, this is George Yoshira for Seniors Living in Paradise, inviting you to check out the brand new Hawaiian Artisan Market at the Prince Kohio Plaza. The Artisan's Market is all about promoting the Hawaiian culture, aloha spirit, and caring for our kupuna. It is located in the former Radio Shack area and open on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Sunday only from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Heading this special project is Ivan Hagen, the marketplace will feature all things Hawaiian, including art, crafts, cultural practitioners, entertainment, fresh foods, and even food like Lao Lao. There is no charge to visit the marketplace, and proceeds will help our local kupuna and senior groups with their activities. We hope to see you there. Here we go. One package is like two servings, he said. Two serving, one package, okay? So I got I make two serving with this because I gotta feed that guy. Okay. Put two serving. Okay. Here's your kimchi fried rice. Okay? So I got two servings of that. Now, this on the side. Oh you remember um, um I had speed. You remember I he went out there. And then we showed you guys how to make the shot ribs, right? So here's the shot ribs. All the way from speed. Okay. Shot ribs over here. Okay. Then I get you know what? I got this crabby cake. It could be on sale at KTA. Oh, what is it? It looks like it's frozen. And I fry them up here. It came like, you make them kind of crispy. Crabby cake. Cut them in fours. Okay. One, two, three, four. Make sure the outside is a little crispy. Yeah. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one sauce for the crabby cake. We're going to get our mayonnaise. Okay. Put a little sriracha inside.
Okay. A little salty. Real simple. Simple recipe. Okay. And I grab this thing and I stir them up. You know that I use all disposable stuff. Stay in KTA, the air, so you know what I mean? And then nobody like wash dishes for me. When I go to Cheryl House, Cheryl wash all the dishes. So then I'll dribble this right on. Okay? Grab it, okay? That's for my man here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just like that. Okay? So I can go take some. Mmm! Oh man, this stuff is going on. Mmm! Mmm! Nothing stop. Mmm! Mmm! Sir, I'm gonna give this to the guy for his, for his meal right there. Let's see what he think. Aloha, next on Seniors Living in Paradise, we like to feature classic cars of the Big Island. Each month, we like to feature different cars you know, from the past to bring back memories and smiles from our old timers. You know, these car hobbies have put in so much time, energy, money into these hobby projects, and we, we certainly should all appreciate it. First, we'd like to show you a 1928 for two door. The owner, Cherry Faulkner, and she's from Pahoa. Believe it or not, this car came, uh, was purchased online from California. And it has a 350 engine with a 350 transmission. It's a beautiful car, and we thank her for sharing this with us. Aloha. Next, we have Kalai Ahia. And he's from Curtis Town, and he has his beautiful 54 Ford pickup. He's been the owner for about eight years of this truck. He says he got it from a yard in Honoka. Now he's gonna get into the truck and show us how it drives away. Give us a wave. Aloha. Next, we'd like you to check out this beautiful 1955 Ford Thunderbird. The owner shown here is Daryl Pereira of Hilo. And he has had this car for about three years. And as you can see, it's really in good shape. You know, he has a brand new Ford engine, Thunderbird engine, updated with fan and all kinds of things. He also has two other classic cars on the Big Island. We're gonna watch him drive away in his beautiful Thunderbird, Ford Thunderbird. Next, we like to feature Ken Boyer and his daughter in their 1977 Cutlass Supreme. Beautiful car. It's kind of hard to believe that this car is 40 years old. Beautiful. Next, we feature Mike Heidenfeld with his 1938 Chevy Master Deluxe. I don't think you've ever seen a car like this, but it's so classic. Next, we feature Curtis Silva and his beautiful wife in their beautiful 1957 Chevy Bel Air. I don't think uh, you'll find a more uh, nicer car than this on the road. And Curtis tells me that he was born in 1957. And finally, we like to feature Herbert Late and his pal Paula Rodriguez in their 39 Ford Five Window Coupe. And that's it for this month. We hope these classic cars has brought back a lot of fond memories and smiles to our old timers. We hope to see you with more classic cars next month. Okay, now it's September, getting cold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a chicken haircut, okay? And get the pan hot there. 
Everybody loves chicken acre, yeah? And I'm gonna do them the real old fashioned way. You know, first, what I'm gonna do is I'm putting some garlic and ginger into here. And I, I'm gonna let them kind of like burn and then all the flavors gonna come out of this stuff. So I just put them in before the, um, before I put in oil in it. Some garlic and ginger and let it go like this, okay? Then, put in a little oil, okay? Uh, so the thing will stop. Now this is the key guy right here. You see my chicken, I cut them all up and I marinate them. So the way I marinated it, I just put some flour inside there. Yeah, show you how you marinate flour. Just to show you how it's done. Okay? Oops, I'll show you. Just like that. You mix them up just like on base. So me, when I cook any kind of stuff, uh, stir fry with vegetable, I kind of make a marinade like this, this uh, flour and and show you. See, that's why I like about working in KTA. Just throw it up. Uh, but you know, you gotta make sure, you know what you guys get any kind of rubbish. Make sure you throw me away in the rubbish can. You go beat you any kind of plate. Throw them away in the rubbish can. No, just throw them on the road. You know, I go places like Japan, or you know, you go places like Germany. There's so many people, it's so crowded, you cannot find rubbish can, but no more rubbish. Because you know, the problem is, the people, the one gotta take care of the rubbish, okay? So, that's what's happening. I go all over looking and no more rubbish. Because everybody learned how to throw me the rubbish can. Very, very important. Yeah, if the chicken starts frying up, we'll be right back. Aloha and thank you so much for watching us on Seniors Living in Paradise. Today we'd like to talk to you about growing your own food. We're here at the Kyoka Paneva Farmers Market in Hilo. We're talking to two very special people. One is my very good friend. This is Howard Pea. He's uh, actually from Kalapana, but he started this project. He got the help of Dr. Sakai. Howard, can you tell us how this whole thing got started? So this place is on the Hawaiian homes. Yeah. And uh, our organization is uh, the Kyoka Paneva Farmers yeah. Association. Yeah. And then uh, was during the time of Millie Spencer, she was the president. Yeah. And they was looking for a place for the association. So she was able to acquire mm -hmm. one acre mm -hmm. of this lot. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, purpose was to start a, a farmer's market. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had the farmer's market, but uh, it didn't turn out well. <laughs> called the Hawaiian farmer's market. So I ever thought yeah, you had to be Hawaiian. So what happened, that's why I, I told my community, hey, we need a strategy mm -hmm. to bring people into our farmer's market. Mm -hmm. At least they know this is a farmer's market for everyone. So I met uh, uh, Dr. Sakai, mm -hmm. and that was through uh, Gerald Mauhili, mm -hmm. who is one of the board members. Mm -hmm. And then when I met the doctor, the doctor said, yes, I'm looking for a place to teach hydroponics. Mm -hmm. And so it was in November 13, mm -hmm. 2013, when the doctor came here and uh, we began a hydroponic class mm -hmm. and until today. Wow. So like how many students have, have come through you guys? Oh, maybe 500 families came no through this. No kidding. Yeah, students wow. came through this program. Yeah. We have about 55 yeah. at this time. Yeah. Right now, there's a class going on. Yeah, right there's doctor? a class going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's an ongoing, yeah. it's a six consecutive weeks. They'll teach you basic family hydroponics in a small scale of commercial I hydroponics. See. I see. It's a six consecutive weeks yeah. and it's free. Yeah. And uh, cannot be that price. Cannot be there. <laughs> and the and doctor, I mean, he, I love him, man. <laughs> he, he, 
he dedicated his time. He, mm -hmm. he wanted to teach people to plant their own food. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants. And then his goal was to, see we have 1,580 acres in Paneva. Mm -hmm. There's about 253 lessees. Mm -hmm. So he wants to educate them and produce hydroponic food enough to supply this whole state of Hawaii. That's it's not right. it's not 6,000 6, miles from China or 4,000 miles from Argentina. Yeah. It's 20 feet from your dinner table. All right. You know how it, um, I understand the people who attend the classes and do the work here, they get to take home the vegetables, right? Well, I tell you what, they harvest 96 veggies a week. Yeah. So one table consists of 48 veggies. Uh -huh. They harvest two tables, 96 veggies, and they take it home. Wow! You cannot be that. Be there. <laughs> I'm Elvin Iwashita, and I I kind of like uh, learn organic and planning through Dr. Sakai. And so I try to apply what uh, I learned here. And this section is strictly for organic style planting. That means uh, it's not like chemical fertilizers in here. It's, it's uh, organic fertilizers. Yeah? Aloha, my name is Nani Whitney Camacho. And I'm here to assist and help Howard, who is our director for our program. And the department that I'm in, he actually asked to assist was the commercial tent. We have the commercial tent that we provide for every student that comes to the class to learn the process of how to do commercial crop growing. Folks, we're talking to the man, <laughs> the <laughs> big man, Dr. William Sakai, University of Hawaii Hilo, and he's a man credited for teaching and, and sharing information. Hey, Dr. Sakai, thank you so much for all your contributions to the community. Howard cannot say enough nice things about you. Well, I have a lot of fun, actually. It's, uh, I enjoy teaching, so, and I think hydroponics is the future because it uses 70% uh, 70, 70 less water and 70% less nutrients. So, uh, and what it also does, it doesn't pollute the groundwater. So it's ideal for island situations where, you know, the, all we have down there is, is the, the freshwater lens. So anybody can do it actually, right? Oh, yeah. You don't you don't need that much water, you don't need electricity, you can Yeah. Yeah. That's the beauty of these these systems. Uh, initially developed by uh, Dr. Imai at the Asian Vegetable Research Center. Um, but uh, then Bernie Kratke and uh, Sheldon Furitani taught it over here. And so we're, we're using most of their, their ideas. We know that your classes are growing larger and larger. Week by week, sir. Oh, well, I think we got about 50, I think. Huh? Yeah, about 50. Wow. But the last class had 70. Wow. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you so much again, you know, for all what you've done for our community and spreading the word about getting people to grow their own. Yeah, it's, a, it's really simple. Because uh, all the, you need is the, the water, the fertilizer, and the, the containers to hold them in. And then, uh, so you, you plant up the seeds, you put the fertilizer in there, and with the three gallon buckets that we have, uh, that's all you do, you watch them grow. Five weeks later, you harvest. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start today. Okay. Thank you. Carrots, because you know, carrots, carrots is, uh, you know, it's a little bit hardy. It takes a longer time to cook. So I stir fry them, leave them in the hair. In the meantime, I got two cans of sukiyaki tomo. Inside here, I got everything. You see? You got the noodles, you got takenoko, you got the mushroom. But you know that once in a can, what is really important, 
you gotta wash up good. Me, I don't like the really the smell that comes out of it. But shirky, uh, shirky go um, Tsukiyatomo is the best. So I rinse it all out, wash it really good, and I had it drained right there. Okay, Tsukiyaki no Tomo. Okay, let it go like this, okay? You got some chicken broth. You see this chicken broth? Dump some chicken broth inside. And you scrape the flour so it makes a nice roux like it. See? Just like that. See? You see now the thing, oh, you scrape the bottom of the pan and you make this really, really nice. Okay? Then, just do that, I put in my sukiyaki tomo. Okay? Then, I add in my favorite thing, ah, sake. Yeah, you can put beating or whatever it is. Uh, me like to suck it. Too bad I met KTA or not. I would be drinking the rest. But, you know, I said KTA, so I gotta kind of like hold back a little bit. Okay? So look out, look out. Look good already. And this is the reason why I gotta put in a carrot or carrots or not. No more color, all right? And to this. Yeah, this is a secret, baby. Butter. I dump some butter inside. And I'm gonna leave back some can, whatever you get in here. Okay. And I'm gonna cover this. I'm gonna let it go. In the meantime, I'm gonna find that guy, Turkey. I'm gonna try out the, the, the bento I make for him. I think he'll be really, really happy. And we'll let this go and go let it cook. Okay? And we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Pauline Fukunaga for Seniors Living in Paradise. And today we're at the Panaeva Gym and we're going to be learning about a brand new game called Pickleball. It's brought out by the Elderly Activities Division and with me is Jan Bumatai who will be telling us a little bit more about Pickleball. Hi, uh, well in Hilo we started Pickleball in 2009 mm -hmm. after I played in Washington and I came home and built a court and slowly people have just come and once Connie got introduced to it um, It just took off, huh? It's, take, it's taking off. We're trying to get more court time and we'd like to have court time at night. Great! Yeah. Now how did it get its name Pickleball? Uh, back in 1965 on Bainbridge Island in Washington, um, these people were just playing a game and their dog Pickles kept going after the ball. Oh, that's so cute. So they started calling it Pickleball. But cute. it's been in existence a long time. It's just catching on in Hilo now. Great. Now, what kind of court do you play on? It's the same size as a badminton court, 20 by 44 and it goes to a score of 11 points. Great, and uh, how many people can play? Singles or doubles. Oh, very yeah. much like tennis and badminton Absolutely. then. Yeah. And the object of the game is? To win. <laughs> awesome, is there a time limit on it? No, no time limit, no. And it's just great exercise for all ages. Actually. Great, and uh, I see behind us the um, Net is a little bit low. Can you tell us more about the equipment used? Yeah. Well, the net actually is 36 inches on the side and 34 inches in the middle. And we use solid paddles, mm -hmm. uh, larger than a ping pong paddle, mm -hmm. and wiffle balls. Oh, I love wiffle balls. Yeah. That makes it a bit slower yeah, for us. Yeah. Awesome. Great. And with me right now is Connie Yoshiyama, a star player of pickleball. <laughs> so, Connie, tell me. How did you get involved? It was last, maybe March 2016. Um, before that, a friend had said, come play pickleball, Railroad Avenue. And I dismissed that. And then somebody else said, come play pickleball. Until finally, one of um, her real good friends said, come over, I'll even pick you up. So I found the place, and I haven't stopped going since. So you look awfully fit, so tell me more about the uh, benefits, health benefits of this game. Well, I've heard people who lost 50 pounds playing pickleball, and I've heard them say their blood sugar count went down. 
several of them said that. So, you know, I suggest it for people who have been told by their doctors, you need exercise. This is fun. Awesome, great. So again, where, we, where can we sign up? Call Kamana Senior Center or come drop by at um, Panava Gym, 8 to 12 on Fridays. So now we'll be watching a match between Laurie Lay and Connie. This is a aerobic game. <laughs> So there you have it, the newest game in Hilo, Pickleball. Jan, how do we sign up for it? Oh, you can go to Kamana and sign up or come here on Fridays from 8 to 12 and we have the forms. Great, so hope to see you at Panaeva Gym for Pickleball. And here's Kapoor, man. He's the most handsomest guy we have in the yes. store. The Thank smartest you much, and yeah. the best personality. Yes. And what else? And what else? The uh, best looks, eater. Yeah, best looks. eater. There you go. Okay. King <laughs> and I will make for you a special dinner. Oh, it's a Korean dinner. I know okay. you got to work late tonight. Cheers. I want you to go taste the first, then you can take the rest of my break. Okay? Okay. Yeah, how do you like that? Oh, that meat. And it's like kimchi fried rice. Okay. So taste that, baby. What do you think? Mmm. <laughs> 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 oh, she in Japanese and Ono in Hawaiian. Okay, and then check this a short rib, speed and make that. Oh, speed. Yeah. Mm. How is that? Oh, my marinade is so delicious. Yeah, you <laughs> make that marinade. That's a good sauce. I know right? I would make this yeah, sauce. You see, as well. you yeah, you see, he's our marinade. I man. know my, I know my flavor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's the one we call the sauce. And this one here, we have the guy, frozen crabby cake. And I made just mm. a sriracha mayo sauce on top. Oh, so yeah. yeah. So I just said show people how to cook real easy and fast. Oh yeah, really. Okay, simple. try that. Mm. How you like the food? Oh, yeah. hands and honor, everybody. Huh? <laughs> this guy can cook. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. You're the man. No need <laughs> speed. This guy <laughs> ready. Now what you mean? Come, come hey, he's a man, man. He's a man. It's mm. Hawaii, you know how to use chopstick. You got awesome. I know, yeah. thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> man. You can have this for your dinner. Yeah, okay, when you go to dinner break. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your hard work over there. You're the awesome man. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Turkey, right there. <laughs> <laughs> CETA, the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, the State of Hawaii Department of Agriculture, and the Hawaii Farm Bureau created these instructions on how to wash your fruits and vegetables. When preparing food, especially foods that are eaten raw like produce, the key to food safety is clean. Start with clean hands, surfaces, cutting boards, and utensils. It's a good idea to rinse all your produce before peeling, cutting, and eating. Debris, waxes, chemicals, or bacteria may get on produce as it makes its way from the farm to the consumer. Even if you aren't eating the skin, rinsing will remove dirt and bacteria that can be transferred to hands or other surfaces. You don't need a special produce wash. Clean water from an approved water source will do an equally good job. Soap and bleach are not meant for human consumption, so don't use these products to clean fresh fruits and vegetables. Produce with thick skins can be scrubbed with a vegetable brush. Produce grown in or on the ground often has grooves and coarse rinds that need to be scrubbed thoroughly under running water. Fruits or vegetables with a waxy skin, like cucumbers, apples, tomatoes, or oranges, can be cleaned by rubbing your hand over the surface under running water. For clustered produce, like grapes, broccoli, or cauliflower, separate sections before rinsing. For leafy vegetables, discard the outer leaves, then rinse each leaf separately under water, rubbing gently to clean uneven surfaces. For fragile produce, like berries, place in a colander and rinse thoroughly. After rinsing produce, remove water by draining or using a spinner, then dry with a clean cloth or paper towel. If you buy packaged produce labeled pre-wash, ready to eat, or triple washed, rinsing is not necessary. If you prefer to rinse pre-washed produce, be sure it does not contact unclean surfaces or utensils. If pre-washed or ready to eat is not on the label, 
wash produce before eating. Before you enjoy the bounty of fruits and vegetables available in Hawaii, remember to wash your produce. Sugar. You know that I never put no sugar. You chicken egg are full of sugar. I never put no sugar in there. So I just add a little sugar in there. And just to give the little thing. Okay. Let them out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. My chicken egg ready to go. You just put this on the rice and good to go. Okay. Hey, Kapoor! I go call that guy I can't for the. Hey, Kapoor! Kapoor! One more taste. Mm. You know, when we were like young in the plantation, we done nothing but the insect can hate them. Okay. okay. It tastes baby. a little hot, but I just, I just think more food come up. Oh yeah, this bugger is. <laughs> That's why I like you taste about me. I don't like burn my mouth. Your mouth gets that from Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. Mmm. <laughs> what do you think? Mmm. Oh, plantation day. <laughs> Winner, eh? Winner. Yeah. Dump mm. it on rice and all that. Yeah, for yeah. real, no? Mmm, with the gravy sauce. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Okay. Next week, man, George will be back. Come on, but now we get Kapoor here and yeah. Speed. We get, get, the, yeah, get the kitchen. Okay, mm. give the shaka. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay. Wow, man, it's an exciting time again. You know, once a year we're here at Pro Country Club and we're here for the Trojan Miracle Network fundraising. And I have again the Vice President of Retail Operation, Dan Miller come all the way from the mainland to come and join us here. So Dan, come on, what's your thoughts? Oh man, hey Derek, first of all, good to be here, brother. Thank you. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you every year. I look forward to seeing this group every year. Fantastic. And uh, I think this is eight years in a row now. Eight, eight years, years in a row, in a row exactly. The Hawaii Ace Retailers yes. across all these islands, 26, 27 stores get together, raise a ton of money for children, and all that money stays locally right here in Hawaii. And even today, uh, Guy Kamataki, his, uh, I call it his servant leadership, ah. as a uh, Ace Retailer, right. a group leader, right. uh, in there is about 50 uh, Ace Hardware Associates, professionals, and getting, learning, trained. getting trained, learning how to be more helpful to their customers. Knowledge, they know what they're doing. You know, we are the helpful folks, right. and those folks are the ones that amaze their customers every time, every day. So, Derek, I'm glad to be here, brother. What, and, what and, you, you know what, you know what, Dan, you know, the, the amazing thing about it is that, you know, when you come here, you look at all the ace people coming together, just like a one big family, yeah. and, and, and you'll be over here, and you're, you're supporting that, and this is what Hawaii is about. Absolutely. And that's why we call this place, like, Ohana, Ohana, one family. family. Yeah, family. exactly. And you can just feel the spirit over there, exactly. right? Exactly. And whenever I go to an H store, I still feel the same old good old yeah. Ohana spirit where yeah. it's family, everybody trying to help each other. They're trying to help the customer because they look at the customer as being part of their family. And you know what? Ace is a really amazing place because Ace is the helpful place. It is, it is. And you know, you talk, you, I think about that uh, Ohana family. Even though Ace is a, one of the most significant brands in America, period. And just this past week, there was a lot of statistics came out about that. But every one of these owners are independent uh, entrepreneurs. Uh -huh. They're in their community, right. giving to their community, serving their community. Under the Ace brand, yes, but 
This is Ohana. It's the family that's in the community. You know, it's just like the Kamitaki family, you know, we're on the big island. I mean, they give so much back to the community. And our local local owners, right, yes. giving back to the community. Yes. And, you know, and, and the brand Ace makes it all happen. So, sure hey, you know what? Okay, brada. Thank you, sir. Brada. Okay. <laughs> okay, give him the shaka. I love shaka. <laughs> Dan Miller, an amazing, amazing guy. Hey, Vice President of Retail Operation for Ace Hardware Store. Ace is the helpful place. You got it, brother. Right, come on. Hey, man. Ah. I asked the Ace employees, why should I shop at Ace? I think mainly I think though it's it's a place where you can actually get somebody to help you, take you to the product, uh, show you what to do with it, how to fix your problem. Ace is the friendly place. The great customer service and all the product knowledge we can give them. Well, because we have the best products, we have a little bit of everything, and they enjoy coming to visit with me. Yeah. For the best customer service. Best customer. Hey, give the big shaka. All right. Because we're a helpful place, um, custom, giving customer service. Shaka. We have knowledgeable employees. Oh, yeah, okay, awesome. Shaka, shaka, shaka. Hey, I got some unbelievable Ace Hardware employees here. What do you think people shop at Ace? Customer, customer service. service. Because <laughs> we have awesome customer service. Like people come to me and they're like, Ace is the place. Ace is the place. place. Every month, I ask customers, why do they shop at Ace? Right, everything here in Ace? Yes, I like Ace. Ace is the place. place. Ace is the place. Right. And you find everything you want in Ace? Everything. Hey, they're all over the place. So is Ace always, the place? Ace is the place. They're always so willing to help. And you find a here in Ace? Yeah. Ace is the place. Ace is the place. So you found everything good in here in Ace? Absolutely all the time. Is Ace the place? It's the place to be. Okay, awesome. So we need to come to Ace because they have all kinds of things that I love. I love this store. Yeah, so is Ace the place? Ace is the place. Okay. Ace is the friendly place. Ace is the place. It's that time again, the 15th Annual Music Nostalgia, a fundraiser for the Japanese Center. It's happening October 7th, Saturday, at the Empty Sally's Luau Halle. It starts at 2 p.m. and ends at 4.30 p.m. There's $15 donation in advance, $20 at the door. Tickets available at the Y Japanese Center, KTA Buanico Store, KTA Downtown Store, Hompa Hongwanji Hilo Betsuin, Hilo Dai Jingu, Kamana Senior Center, and Asami's Kitchen. There's great performers like Bernie Nakano, Brian Suzuki from Honolulu, Grace Kavita, the Hill High School Japanese Club, the famous Hiroshi Suga, Lorraine Asakura, Lance Okamura from Kona, Rina Imoto, Revin Ohiro Hota, and Sachi Imaizumi, Subaru Telescope Singing Group, Utae Suzuki, and the Waikia High School Japanese Club, James Shimazu, Dirk Yoshina, and Misaki Saiti. You need to be there. Fundraiser for the Hawaii Japanese Center, October 7, Anthony Sally's Luau Holly, from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. It's only $15 donation in advance and $20 at the door. Get your tickets today.
where we'll see you there on October 7th at the N.T. Sally's Luau Holly from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. for the 15th Annual Musical Nostalgia. Aloha, it's that time of the program where George and I go all over the island looking for a great place to eat. And you know what? I found an excellent place, H&K Lunch Shop. Hey, H&K Lunch Shop is, is not just a lunch shop. You know, they have like, it's like an Okazuya Korean food lunch shop. And the food here is so mm, moishi. Hey, let me show you exactly what I mean. Man, I'm here at the wonderful, most exciting place at H&K Lunch Shop. And over here, you guys have basically Korean Okazuya, right? <laughs> yes, All sir. kinds of food here. And you know, I'm going to have some. So, and the uh, by the way, this is Auntie Betty. Uh, Auntie Betty, what's your hours here? <laughs> what, what hours you work? You 6.30 to 6.30? Yes, sir, I am. You, so you are yeah, 6.30 to 6.30, Monday to Saturday. To Saturday. Saturday. Sunday rest. Yes, sir. Sunday rest. Okay, Monday to Saturday. And, and this, a Sunday churchy. Churchy. And this is one of the few cousin yards <laughs> that's open late, right, to 6.30. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's good. So, and the berry. Yeah, what I have here? Spicy pork. Spicy pork. Mmm! Mmm! Huh? Oh, no, it's good. Like, whoo! What is this? Chicken katsu. Chicken katsu. And this is what kind of sauce? Tonkatsu sauce. Tonkatsu sauce, okay. Mmm! Ah! And the berry. Ah! Ah! This is so good. Thank you. Masta, masta. Masta yo. Masta It's my favorite. I love your long right? Yes, sir. Chapche. Chapche. Oh. And you make all kinds of other food too, yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's so good, and this is your barbecue chicken. But and this one, you grill them too, no? Eh? Yes, sir. Mm. Oh, it's the meat john. Meat john. Oh, we have meat john. And we have fish john. Yeah. Fish john. No, meat john, fish john. Oh. Mm. by Korean. Yeah, real stuff. A little bit spicy. I like spicy. Oh! Oh! It's crispy on the outside, juicy on the inside, and the flavor is yeah. Boom! And the berry. That's Korean sushi. You mean Korean sushi? Yes, sir. Wow, look at this. All kinds of stuff in here, yeah? Hmm. Mm. The hour is 6.30 in the morning, 
and they close 6 30 evening sunday rest sunday she go to church and they better go to church sunday <laughs> no come sunday monday to saturday no eh? yes, sir. sunday church eh? yes Thank you for that supplying the HK line shop. Thank you very much. Okay. Come to me that. Okay. Okay. Come on down, HK line shop. The food is mashta. Mm. Welcome to Behind George Ishida's Camera. September is a time I'm reminded how special it is to live in Hawaii. Yes, we have beautiful weather, beautiful scenery, but what makes it so special is you, the people. People arriving from all parts of the world, blessed with the Hawaiian culture of working, playing, and living together as one family. A place where respect the differences and focus on the positive of others. A place where decisions are made considering how it might affect others. Yes, Hawaii is a special place where people dream about, where they save their life savings for a memorable vacation. We want to give our visitors such a memorable moment that they want to come back to our island. Keep Hawaii, that clean and beautiful, relaxing place with the spirit of aloha. I want to take this time to thank all of our seniors for all you do to make Hawaii this special place. We, the younger generation, need to pass on the lessons and values we've learned from your teaching and observing what you do. Work, play, and live together as one family. Thank you, seniors, for being so special. Yes, everyone, lucky we live in Hawaii. Hey, here's the chef, Barney, and the beautiful girl from Tiki. <laughs> Tell everybody, come on down. Come on down to Tiki. Big soccer. Awesome. Okay. Burp. Aloha. <laughs> Very good. Where are Side street is. Big soccer. Hey, guess what, man? Hey, my friends from Tekula, Navahi, Okalani, Opu, man, Navahi. I got one plama. <laughs> who, who you work for now? Qualified plami. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, hey, brother. Yeah, hey, what? Good work, sir. Yeah. Yeah, you're the I'm boss, awesome. hey. Qualified plami. Awesome. Yeah. Guess what, man? My friend, he went by Fanny Poor yesterday at KTA. What you bought today? Fish, yeah. fish, fish to go along with the KTA. Oh. Right, dried apple and pit. Okay, he <laughs> don't dry them. You know that. Okay, give all your friends a shaka. Hello. Uh, hey, my friend Mendoza from um, Hakalao. Hey, so uh, what do you guys do? Oh, we do flooring. Oh, you guys do flooring. Eh? So then it, what do they call? You call Paul's in the prizes. Okay, and you ask for the guys right there, man. Hey, yeah. Yeah, give the shaka, shaka, shaka. Paul's in the prize. Mahalo. Hello. Guess what, man? I get my friend here, man. Hey, tell your friends out there. Uh, 
on Le Poy, uh, on board. There. All right. Give the sucker, give the sucker. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guess what? I got my friends from Kau. What you came here to buy? Okay, give the sucker, give the sucker. Yeah. <laughs> and I meet Ranger Rick here at the Volcanoes um, Observatory Center. So, hey, what do you want to tell everyone in Hilo? Living in paradise. <laughs> And our boy, Ranger Rick. <laughs> awesome. God, man. I get Bruce over here. Right, so, Bruce, what do you want to tell George? You was the number one teacher in school when I was there, and I never forget you. Man, yeah. awesome. You mean George was your teacher? Of course, he was my teacher. Wow, awesome. And he was a very good teacher. Okay, give George a shaka. <coughs> yeah. And aloha. Okay. I always love you, respect you, Mr. Yoshida. <laughs> hey, guess what? Guess what, Bumpy? On a little way. Would you like to tell your friends there in Hilo? And I get my special friends there. What do you want to tell anyone out there? Hi, Evan Hart and Mom. Okay, give Evan Hart and Mom a big shaka. Yeah. <laughs> I got my man here, Ricky. Hey, so Ricky, you paint, eh? Paint. Eh? So wait, what? Carpenter, painter. Okay, what company? Uh, Fuji Taki. Fuji Taki, you the man. Okay, give the shaka. Uncle Derek is the man. Yeah, you the man. <laughs> and I got my friend grinding here. What family is this? This is the Ponce family. The ah, Ponce family, give everybody the shaka. Right, Here's the shaka. famous and fabulous Hiroshi Suga. <laughs> between grandparents and grandchildren. And here's some special grandchildren messages to their grandparents. Hey, guess what? I have Brian and Sarah, man. Hey, they're shopping here at JTA. What do you want to tell Grandma? Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Grandma Mara and Grandma Evelyn. Cute granddaughters. Come on, shock again, shock again. Okay. Hey, Grandma Ronell, guess who I see? Two of your grandchildren. What do you want to tell Grandma? Love you, Grandma. Love you, Grandma. Okay, give Grandma the big shaka. Yee, Grandma! Hey, guess what, man? Uh, Grandma Claudia, I see your grandchildren over here. What do you want to tell Grandma Claudia? Hi! Hi, give him the big shaka. Give Grandma Claudia, that's the one. Okay, Grandma Claudia, they love you. Hey, Jen, guess who I see here? What do you want to tell Grammy? Hi, Grammy. Okay, okay, give Grammy the shaka. Hey, Grammy! <laughs> hey, Grandma Jean, guess who I see here? Say, so what do you want to tell Grandma Jean? Happy, happy birthday! Oh, yay! Wait, 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 Grandma Jean, happy birthday! My friend, John Kim, to have dinner with his family, his great-grandson heading to UNLV. John, you go to ULV, UNLV, right? Yeah. Hey, you know your grandpa, he's an awesome, great grandpa, he's an awesome guy. What do you think? John Kim. Yeah, what do you want to tell John Kim? Something, yeah. We'll see you for time. Yeah, okay, okay. Hey, guys, give the shaka. Oh, yeah, Ben. Happy. Oh, yeah. Happy. 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 Okay, awesome. We have a professional basketball team here in Hawaii. Christine and I went to greet them when they came to KTA Puaina Cole. Hey, we're gonna have a basketball team. What do you guys wanna say? Hey, come check them out and support them. Give the big shaka. I wanna say. Happy 55th birthday to Sharo Yoshida. I want to thank you for all you do to make our island 
a fantastic place. There is such an awesome mother, grandmother, wife, and a friend. Thank you, Cheryl, and happy birthday. So that's it for Behind George Yoshida's Camera. But before we go, we want to thank our volunteer cameraman, George and Shirley Ito. And thank you so much for watching us on Seniors Living in Paradise. We'll see you tomorrow night. Aloha.